our ability. In other words, God's ability has become my ability. It's made available to me. I don't rely on my physical strength. I don't rely on my mental capacity. Are you hearing this? Why? It is not by might, it is not by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. By the Holy Ghost. You say, can you do this? I trust the power of God at work in me. I trust the power of God at work in me. I can do all things through Christ. I can. Hallelujah. I can. His ability has become my ability. Says, I am sufficient in his sufficiency. The word used there is called hikia notice. Hikia notice means ability. In your King James, he calls it sufficiency. Then he says that Christ also hath made us able ministers. The same word is used, hikia notice, able ministers of the New Testament. Oh my goodness, able, able. We have his ability to communicate the gospel with power. We have his ability to do what he did. We have his ability, hallelujah, to do like the apostles did. We have the ability of God to make the work grow. Thank God, hallelujah. I can do all things through Christ. Oh, hallelujah. What a life he has given me to live. What a life he has given me to live. The triumphant life in Christ. I have his ability. That's my thinking. That's my mentality. That's my mindset. I got it in me. I, I'm saying this to you. Just imagine if you have this mentality. All right? I'm not trying to sell you something that you don't. This is the way I reason. This is my thinking. These are my thoughts. Are you hearing me? Because I've come to, I've come to understand this stuff. And I've, the word is catalambano. I've taken a hold of it and made it mine. Even though I quote power to you, I say the same thing. I believe the same thing. I'm a success. I'm a success. Hallelujah. The third thing, do like Elisha did when he saw Elijah taken off. You see, this is so important. In 2 Kings, the second chapter, we're going to read from the 8th verse. All right? We find this man of God, Elijah by name, a prophet of God, taking with him a younger man by the name of Elisha. And Elisha was his servant. Elisha was uh, uh, not only the servant of Elijah, but he was uh, known as one of the sons of the prophets. These were all young men that were uh, serving under the prophet Elijah and Elijah had asked him um, to go with him on a journey he actually said tarry here I'm going and the man said I'll follow you until they got here to Jordan and I want to read to you I want you to see you know when I read something like this I'm, I'm scared let me read something to you this is this is powerful and Elijah <laughs> Maybe we should go from verse 7. And 50 men of the sons of the prophets went and stood to view afar off. 50 men of the sons of the prophets. They went and stood to view afar off. They were watching Elijah and Elisha. And they too stood by Jordan. Did you hear that? Elijah and Elisha stood by the Jordan River. And at this time, 50 of the sons of the prophets were watching them. And Elijah took his mantle. What's a mantle? An overcoat. Elijah took his mantle and wrapped it together and smote the waters. And they were divided hither and thither, so that they too went over on dry ground. My goodness. This, I, I want you to think about, look, these are acts of faith. Marvelous acts of faith. He is not trying to bring the children of Israel out of Egypt. It's just two of them. Just two of them. And they get to the river Jordan. He believes what he read about Moses and the Red Sea, Joshua and the Jordan. 
And now here comes Elijah. He doesn't have a troop with him. He takes his mantle, wraps it together, doesn't wait for the rod of Moses, doesn't wait for the ark of Joshua. He is not carrying any religious thing. Takes his mantle and strikes. Doesn't even say anything. Hush! The river Jordan parts in two. And you can be sure Elisha's eyes popped out of the sockets. And they too went through on dry ground. I mean, <laughs> glory to God. What faith? What faith? Now, he's over on that side. <laughs> We're reading verse 9. And it came to pass when they were gone over, that Elijah said unto Elisha, Ask what I shall do for thee before I be taken away from thee. Now, notice. Uh, why did they come here? Elisha, uh, Elijah was getting ready to be taken to heaven. And he knew. The Bible says he didn't die. So when people say that um, death is the only way to heaven, it's not true. Elijah didn't die. He was going to go to heaven without waiting here to age, nor waiting to die. Now imagine this, this man was a great, great man of God. He said to Elisha, you know I'll be taken away today. So they come over here and he says, uh, what do you want before I'm taken away? How is he going to do it? Even the other prophets, according to the Bible, if you study earlier, the Bible tells us that those prophets knew. And they were saying to Elijah, do you know your master will be taken away today? Because they were prophets themselves. Younger prophets, and they had seen it. Do you know your master will be taken away today? He says, forget it. Don't trouble me. That's what he said to them. Why? He was in focus for something. So now, Elijah says, ask what you want. What do you want me to do for you before I'm taken away? Elisha also believed. Because if he didn't believe, he would say, where in the world are you going? But he believed, so he asked. And Elisha said, I pray thee, let a double portion of thy spirit be upon me. <laughs> this is remarkable. I have a teaching on this. Because a lot of people are going to double portion. All right, but you know, um, let's stay in focus now. Verse 10. And he said, thou hast asked a hard thing. Elijah said to Elisha, thou hast asked a hard thing. Nevertheless, if thou see me when I am taken from thee, it shall be so unto thee. But if, if not, it shall not be so. He says, if you see me when I'm taken off, it shall be so. You have it. But if you don't see me, you don't get it. Now that's significant. Because it would take the eyes of a prophet to see him taken away. And if he didn't see him taken away, then he wasn't called to that office. He said, if you see me taken away, you got it. That's the sign. What a sign. Now you can imagine Elijah making sure he's going to see something. <laughs> Hallelujah. But here's the point. Verse, verse 11. It came to pass as they still went on and talked that behold, there appeared a chariot of fire and horses of fire and parted them both asunder and Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven oh glory to God oh glory to God we have an account of a man who journeyed into heaven while somebody watched you know the first time Enoch did it they said they didn't find him so they said nobody no, no, nobody knows where he went but the Bible says Enoch walked with God and he was not found for God took him. He was not found. So everyone was looking for him. They couldn't find him. There was no witness. So God said, next time there'll be a witness. <laughs> Elisha was watching. And suddenly Elijah was taken off by a whirlwind. Pew. Oh, glory to God. Oh, I like that. I like it. First self. And Elisha saw it. And he cried, my father, my father, the chariot of Israel and the horsemen thereof. And he saw him no more. And he took hold of his own clothes and rent them in two pieces. He tore his own clothes. Oh, glory to God. What a day that must have been. What a day. What a day. What a day. What a day. 
Oh, he saw the chariots of Israel and the horses. Oh, glory to God. Hi. He said, my father, my father, the chariots of Israel and the horsemen thereof. A chariot of fire. Elijah was whisking to heaven. And Elijah saw it. Wow. No wonder he tore his own clothes. He couldn't believe in those things anymore. My goodness. Oh, I wish I had been there. I would have loved to have seen it. Oh, boy. That's why it was written for us. So I could see it again. See it in the word. And believe like Elisha. Huh. Verse 13. And he took up also the mantle of Elijah that fell from him. That's interesting. He took up also the mantle of Elijah that fell from him and went back and stood by the bank of Jordan. Oh my goodness. Now you know, they crossed the Jordan and Elijah took off and left Elisha behind. How is he going to go back home? For some people, they would admit that, well, I've relocated. <laughs> you still there? And he took up also the mantle of Elijah that fell from him and went back and stood by the bank of Jordan. And he took the mantle, verse 14, he took the mantle of Elijah that fell from him and smote the waters and said, Where is the Lord God of Elijah? And when he also had smitten the waters, they were parted hither and thither. And Elisha went over. <laughs> oh, glory to God! This is amazing. This is beautiful. See, what do we do with what we got? What do we do with the knowledge? I said, act like Elisha did when he saw Elijah taken away. See, he took the mantle. He didn't turn it into a medium of worship. No. He didn't make a monument of it. No. Wrapped it together. At the Jordan, he's going to do exactly what Elijah did. He smote it, push, and the water padded. You can read the rest of the story. The Bible says those 50 sons of the prophets that were watching, when they saw Elijah come back through that Jordan, they ran to him and bowed. None of them saw Elijah taken away. They didn't see Elijah taken away. They only saw Elijah coming. Then they said, the spirit of Elijah rests on Elisha. And then right away quickly, like the other guys we read about, they went into the flesh. They said, can we help you look for him? And he said, no. Praise the Lord. What are you going to do? You're going to act like that. You're going to do exactly what the word says. You're going to put yourself in there. Are you hearing me? You're going to act with what you know. You are full of God. If you're full of God, then it means where you go, God goes. Can you see that? We no longer have to pray. In our time and in our dispensation, we don't have to pray anymore. Oh God, be with me. No, he didn't say, I will be with you. He said, I am with you. I am with you is not a promise. It's a statement of fact. He told them, I will be with you. But for you, he says, I am with you. That's what Jesus said. I am with you always, even unto the end of the age. I am with you. It's not a promise. It's a present hour reality. It's a fact for now. I am with you. Thank God. He is with me. He is with me. Where I go, God goes. Hey. Where I go, God goes. I'm never alone. Never alone. So when you go, Jesus, Jesus, hey, Jesus, 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 hey, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. No, 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 no. He is with you. Stop crying like that. Say what you want. Oh, glory to God. See, the battle is over. We have won. No, with this knowledge, how, how can you be in lack, in need? It's over. The struggle is over. No more struggling in your life. I always win. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Woo. Hallelujah. I got the strength of God in me. 
I got the life of God in me. I got the spirit of the Son of God. Mm. 